Welcome to RVR Frank's Yurf Dog House. Okay, today we got this going. This floor makes a great layup table. Uh, it would be nice if they offered uh, these doors, uh, you know, built out of an aluminum maybe structure. It may be a little more sophisticated what they want to get into. They typically want to close up that opening there and put a, I think for this dimension here, they want to put a six foot door in because of course their, their standard uh, uh, structure design has to meet uh, a certain opening width with the header and so on and so forth. Then, then it would have to be uh, an eight foot opening and then it brings the whole roof height higher than what I need bring that up probably another uh, foot, 18 inches. I don't need that. I need just something to get the uh, earth dog in here. So anyway, this makes a great layout table to build these things. Uh, my background is in welding. Uh, my old man had a welding shop, portable welding. Uh, when I look back on my childhood, everything was made out of metal, welded. And so that's how I grew up. I'm working with wood mainly because it's easier for the bits and pieces that I you know, work. Uh, but my background is uh, welding as a kid and in that environment it's old school engineering, uh, on the site engineering, reckoning, uh, whatever was needed back then to, to be uh, called upon, build, fabricate, fix, whatever. Anyway, so much for that. Uh, just thought I'd throw that in there. For those of you interested in the weather around here, it's we're starting off today at uh, 53 degrees. It's around 9.30 in the morning. Got down to about 39 last night. It'll get up to about 69 today. But continuing with these bifold doors, I went ahead and decided to not have a, uh, a gap in here. Uh, I need to have that butt up tight against there with my 2x3. And I mentioned before where I had a quarter inch standoff here with the head, head of those screws. A couple at the bottom, one at the top. So what I'm going to do is, is a hog out um, of my 2x3 uh, um, room for those heads to fit in. How I did that, for those who might be interested, is I put a little pencil lead on each of the uh, pr protrusions there, screw heads. It's a little pencil lead, and then I use a rubber mallet while I'm holding that piece in place. I marked where the top of the doors are going to be, and so I want this jam upright to be uh, even with that. So I just hit it with the hammer and transfer that lead, pencil lead, where I'm going to use a, uh, a drill to throw a bit, auger, auger them out to the depth of those screw heads. I've already cut this 2x3 to length, so that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, I used a 7 8 auger for really a, uh, a 5 8 uh, required, uh, I guess, inset. I want a little bit of uh, a adjustment there, not have it so tight. And so I did that at both ends, where I marked it off. So the plan is to get that in place with some lag bolts. Then I'm going to uh, install the hinges on this first panel, put it up, put hinges on this side, and install the second panel, give it a dry run, and adjust uh, as needed for any uh, potential droop that I foresee. At any time, once the skin is on here, it's going to uh, make that a very rigid 
a handle. I doubt I'm going to need any kind of cross support here, but if, so, if I do, I can get to it from the other side uh, and apply that, but I really believe that that skin is going to uh, hold the squareness of each panel once it's installed. So we're going to go ahead and install the first panel. Okay, I want to take a chance here and uh, point out one little detail that when you're identifying where you want to put those anchor points for that door jam to go on the uh, doghouse metal wall here. You want to make sure that you're not putting those points right where the hinge has been interfaced. This is the hinge point that I had uh, identified in an earlier stage of this build. Here and here. And it's desirable to get it maybe in this range, this bolt, but it's at the bottom, so there isn't going to be much uh, leverage on this. It, it's just going to be pushed more into the wall as opposed to being pulled out. This is at the top, so I want to get it far enough by and not interfere with any internal uh, doubling that they might have on that wall. So that's just a little detail that you try to foresee when you do this kind of uh, stuff. And of course, you want to inset that for the head of the light bulb that will go in there, the washer. Okay, so I'll, I'll hold this up in place. Right now, got a little uh, piece in there to hold it up. So it's going to go in there like that. What I'll do is I'll pre drill each of these to the diameter of a lag bolt. Uh, they have enough grip in there. And go ahead and secure that. In using lag screws for the mounting of that door jam, I'd anticipated a, that 14 gauge to be, well, maybe the thickness of this uh, drill um, gauge. And where I would drill a hole and it would just, uh, just screw in there like this. Kind of hard to do with one hand. Where I would find a drill size and just screw that in. Yeah. Well, that's fine if the thickness of that uh, sheet metal fits within these uh, threads. If it doesn't, you strip these out and you wind up not having any threads at all. So I decided, because that is 14 gauge and it's close to 3 16 of an inch thick, that it would be better to put uh, a threaded um, screw in there, quarter, quarter 20, and so I'll have the drill that I just sharpened for a quarter 20 tap. I have every other size as well, up to half an inch. And there happened to be a hole in there already. It's not one that I put in. There's holes here and there where maybe they were putting it together and put something in. So I went ahead and tapped this in there. And because it gets at least three see how thick 14 gauge is. It focuses, there's three, there's a grip of three threads. And that will just go in there like that. So that's what you want. You want a real good uh, solid mount there. And that lag bolt was not gonna cut it. So anyway, that's a uh, little detail that may be of interest to some, others may be aware of it, some may not even be interested. But I've been asked for a little more detail on my uh, projects, and of course comes with it um, a little longer video. Okay, so those are tightened. Uh, you want to be careful not to over tighten. After all, it is only three 16 inch, 14 gauge uh, thickness 
on that square tube. Um, so it's you know it's cinched up there pretty good. Generally have a feel for quarter twenty uh, strength. If you've snapped a couple of those or stripped any threads up, you know what I'm talking about. So we want to make sure that things are level. So there's the doghouse and there's the door jam. So we're, we're co planer there and uh, we'll go ahead and get some hinges installed. These three and a half inch hinges, these are four of them, come with a uh, screw. Looks like it might be a half inch thread grip. And I'm going to go with these one and a quarter uh, number six uh, deck screws, construction screws. Gives me more grip, more confident in those. And they fit nice. But when you drill in here uh, with this grain, it can cause your, your screw to drift, and then you've got a real, then you're chasing to get this thing located where you want. So what I do is I uh, put this down here like that, and then in the nightmare of trying to do this one hand, and then what I do is I center punch this with this this very pointed tool here to give me equivalent to a center punch on metal. Gives me a, a pinpoint. And then what I do is, because I'm pretty close to the edge here, I want to make sure that screw's not going to drift and the wood's not going to spin. And I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and pre-drill those. So I know where the screw's going, the wood is going to expect that screw going in that hole, and it's going to split on me. I don't, with wood, you got to make sure it's uh, done right the first time. Because if you get, if it's not, then you're going to have a wasted piece of wood. It becomes a real structural member to this whole assembly. So, just a little point there. Okay, the first panel, temporary attached. So, key was making sure that it doesn't hit the cement walkway here because it's going to open up like this. The other panel will be hinged here and so the other panel will be hinged at this point opening up to the panel set here. So that's what I was talking about. That's the stop. I think what I'll do is recess these hinges, get a little, close this gap up, clean that up a little bit. That gap will be there because that's where that wire rope is going to run across to mount on the other panel, not this one, the other one, because this is of course coming out, you want a wire rope hanging out there, the wire rope will continue and the itch like this on the panel over here We'll just slide on this as it opens up. That's the concept. We'll be trying that next. So I'll get that other panel on there. I mean, string, I don't know if I'll string that ro rope yet because I've got to put that post in here for the other hinge. So we'll go ahead and get this other panel put out here. Okay, there's the inside looking out of that. Uh, half a section of the bifold doors. You can see it's pretty square uh, across the top. I've got those uh, gussets, give it some strength, some rigidity. Because I don't have the sheet metal skins on there on this side. Okay, so. The way this works is it goes like this. Okay. So that's the way it'll be when it's sinking up. Like this. Okay. 
it swings freely. And I have an eye bolt that is in here and it'll it will stand off. Let's see right here. I have an eye bolt in here and it'll stand off so it catches that, that cable and it'll ride on it like that. So the door may may be opened at an angle like that. Depending on the flex of that cable on that door, keep it up. And there's even with just these these corner braces, there's no uh, droop to that door. And when that panel is secured all the way around, now it is going to be one solid door, uh, only adding 17 pounds uh, to it. So, so anyway, when it opens up, it will track. Get some of the rock here. Okay, it will it will track along here. For the fact that it's being held up by that cable. So, never will the door open up like this. The intention is to minimize the door swing by having it into bifold sections. So I think that's a proof of concept, and what I was looking for was, was this to be the, uh, the point that it secures the door in there at the bottom, and the cable will secure it at the top, and I'll have to see uh, what sort of weather stripping I may put in there to close that, that lip there, maybe it's some, I don't know, phone, garage door, or garage door uh, flashing, I'll have to see. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, dismantle everything, cut these hinges into the wood, close the gap on that. Then uh, I'll attach the aluminum siding on there. Reassemble. I intentionally uh, didn't put all the screws on this panel because I may have to tweak a little depending on the squareness of that sheet metal. I'll actually let the sheet metal drive the squareness of this panel. And I've measured it and it is square, but you never know. There may need to be some tweaking, especially after I just got through hanging this. It's it's pretty even at the top. You can see that gap there is shoot. Maybe an eighth of an inch off. Maybe. Otherwise, it's pretty square. Just hang in there. Off of those four hinges. So that that does uh, that is the right, I think, number of hinges to carry the weight. So I need to get that side finished. Then I need to do the same on this side. Then I'll know where to sink this fence post in the ground here. So not quite sure it might go somewhere in there. Got a bag of cement underneath this plywood. And that's it. So we'll go ahead and start breaking this down. Cut in those hinges and start doing the same on this set. And then uh, decide what the next step's gonna be.